If your startup is in a dark place, what should you do about it? And even if it's not, almost all startups eventually end up in some very dark places, so this will probably end up being relevant to you at some point in your journey. Realistically, when things get really hard, you have three fundamental choices. One is just persevere, break through that brick wall and keep going to your destination. Your second option is to pivot. If there are some green fields nearby, maybe they'd be a better option to continue your company's growth. Or three, maybe the world's just not ready for the startup that you're building and you should shut it down and move on to something completely new. Today, I wanna to talk through how to consider those options and come to a conclusion that you can have confidence in. Welcome to Feel the Boot, the science of startups. I'm your host, Lance Cottrell, and I'm here to help you navigate the nearly vertical learning curve you're going to encounter as you go on your founder's journey. I know what it's like, I have been there myself, and I have helped countless other founders. This episode is part of our Running Your Business playlist, and I'll put a card up in the corner so you can see the rest of the episodes on this topic. We have all kinds of playlists about running a startup, getting started, fundraising, perfecting your pitch, running your business, things you need to know about being a founder, everything that you need to be successful on your journey. I'll put links to everything down in the description. So when you hit the dark times in your startup journey, times when you're unable to raise any funds, right, the angels are not investing, you're not growing, you're maybe losing customers, the technology is not really working, you can't get that product out, you need to decide what to do. Do you continue on? Do you pivot to some new direction? Or do you fold up shop? A close friend of mine has been going through this exact problem just recently. So they had a company that was a hardware play and they were building out this device. Unfortunately, between COVID supply chain issues and some other technical hurdles, they weren't able to get this device out to market and it was going to take forever. Clearly, there was no immediate path forward for them in that direction. Fortunately, in connection with building out this device, they'd been creating a marketplace. And the marketplace, in the meantime, had been starting to grow and see some real traction. They were getting a lot of success with their marketing efforts and getting the cost of acquisitions to a reasonable place. And so they thought, maybe that's where we need to go. But as they ran down that path as their new primary focus, they eventually realized that the unit economics were never going to work out for them. Reselling their kind of products had such a slim margin that in general, they were losing money or only making pennies on each transaction. It was certainly never gonna be something that would grow this to be a venture fundable business. But in the meantime, they'd learned a whole lot about building out platforms for doing marketing and sales in this kind of industry. And they thought, well, maybe that would be something that we could exploit going forward. And so the decision in front of them really is persevering is not much of an option. They have clearly demonstrated the current path is a non-starter, but should they pivot to maybe try some other new direction based on the success they've had, or is it time to walk away from this and try something new? So let's look at that last option first. Should you just call it quits and walk away? Now, are you just beating a dead horse here or is there really a chance for hope at the end of the rainbow? And the problem is it can be easy to convince yourself that there is still life in your business because of the sunk cost fallacy. Right? You've spent months, maybe years, lots of money perhaps on trying to build out this company. And it always feels like, oh, if we just did a little bit more, maybe we could get there. And the key here is to really look hard at that from a realistic perspective. Can you prove that it has a chance of working? Or better yet, can you try to prove that it won't work? Really work hard to demonstrate that this is a non-viable model. Because if you succeed, you should definitely walk away right now. I've seen companies that keep going, keep pivoting, keep readjusting until they've been around for maybe a decade and they've got huge amounts of dead weight sitting on their cap table. Enough previous investors and founder dilution that new investors really aren't interested in getting involved in the company. It can be a poison pill for your business and really make a strong case for shutting things down and starting again. And if you do need to shut down and start a new business or even go back into the job market, don't feel too bad. Remember, the vast majority of startups fail within their first couple of years, so you're in good company. And it's really not held against the founder 
when you're looking for money in future rounds, as long as you failed for reasonably defensible reasons, not sort of stupidity or fraud. So for my friend, their cap table is actually in pretty good shape. They have some strong intellectual property that they can leverage. They are able to radically slash costs and downsize to allow them to continue to try this experiment for some significant amount of time. So at the moment, closing up shop is not their obvious choice. Now that we've reached about the midpoint of this episode, I want to make the usual YouTube ask. If you're finding this content interesting, please like this episode. It tells YouTube to show you more of this kind of content and it helps the channel substantially. If you've been watching a number of these episodes, I take it as a personal favor if you would go a step further, subscribe, ring that bell, and leave a comment letting me know how you have dealt with dark times in your startup and what other topics you'd like to see me cover. It makes a huge difference to the channel and I really appreciate it. Thanks. So, there's no light at the end of the tunnel that you're currently going down. But as you look around, it looks like there's some light down the next tunnel over and maybe some really tasty green fields just beyond that. So, it's worth considering whether a pivot is a good option for you. The danger here is that fields that look green may turn out to be as difficult or worse than where you are now. The problem is, you know where all the minefields are in your current market space. And when you're going to someplace new without understanding it in depth, it looks attractive and looks easy. And it won't be until you get into it that you really understand how difficult that path may be with respect to what you're doing now. The key then is how quickly can you validate this new direction? Can you do some simple experiments or some testing of the waters to see whether this actually looks like it will be a more attractive direction to go than where you've been going? Because you don't want to sink some huge amount of time, effort, and money down yet another dead end. So validate as early and as cheaply as you possibly can. So for my friend, they see an opportunity to take all these tools and learnings that they built up on their marketplace and turn it into a SaaS tool to help out all of the other merchants in that same space. And they've done a bunch of surveys and interviews that got some very good traction. They've got excellent positive response from potential customers. They were able to easily reach large numbers of customers who were happy to fill out those surveys. So that indicates that the cost of acquisition will probably be pretty reasonable. So this seems it might be a very viable direction for them and certainly worth exploring with the runway they have left. Now, the third option is to persevere, to just keep doing what you're doing. And if it looks like you're making real traction and you have enough runway, that may be a reasonable option to pursue, right? You may just be able to slowly work your way out. But if you're coming up towards the end of your runway, the money is running out, there's not more money coming in, you might need to consider what I call the cockroach strategy. Right? They always say after a nuclear annihilation, the only things that'll be still crawling around and eating all of our leftovers is the cockroaches. And after all, you can't win if you're not alive. So can you retool your business to allow you to continue forward? Shift into a bootstrapping mode where you're optimizing your income, you're minimizing your expenses, getting to that break-even point where you're default alive, not default dead, and continue forward. Now that requires that the company have fundamentally good bones. Right. Again, if you've demonstrated that the company will never really work at scale or provide the kind of end result that you want to achieve, don't just stay in there forever hoping it will. Right? There need to be some really viable sources of light in the distance that you're persevering towards that will allow you to change circumstances. But sometimes you're just too early and the market trends are going to come along and support the business that you're trying to start if you can only still be around when they get there. So it's hard and it cannot be a lot of fun, but it's certainly a viable option when you don't want to walk away from the business and there are no good pivoting opportunities nearby. Now, this is not an option for my friend. They do not have any runway of significant length, right? They need to get something to work right away and they've pretty well demonstrated that the current model isn't viable. There is no path to get to break even for them and no way to grow to a kind of business that they'd be interested in running in the long term. So the cockroach strategy is definitely off the table. So what did my friend end up choosing? Well, there's very little downside to pursuing this pivot direction. They've cut their costs to almost nothing and they can get answers to whether or not this is a viable direction in fairly short order, just a couple of months. 
So there's not really much downside to exploring it, and there's good potential. The market they're exploring looks like it has a very large total addressable market. So if this works, this is the kind of business that they'd want to be in. So it has the potential to be very interesting. So they're going to explore this, but they're also very cognizant of exactly what their cutoffs are, what they need to see by when to make the decision of whether this is a viable direction. And if they don't see that, they will cut bait and move on. And that I think is really important to not make this an open-ended option, but know when you need to end up folding and walk away from the table. Thanks for watching this episode. I hope you found it useful and interesting. If you'd like to get more Feel the Boot content, go to feeltheboot.com. You'll see all the rest of our episodes and articles. You can also subscribe to our newsletter, Boot Prints, to get alerted every single time new articles or other Toulouse content comes out. I also include a link to my personal Calendly account so you can get one-on-one -on -one coaching with me for free to talk about any issues that your startup may be facing. Additionally, you may be interested in meeting other founders at the Feel the Boot Founders Alliance. I'll put links to both of those down in the description, and I'll put a card up there with information about how I work with and advise startups. And until next time, ciao.